before I die. Yeah. Oh. Look in this first pocket. That's usually where you hide it. Oh, yeah. Oh, but I didn't hide it. I put it there so that I could find it. Here it is. Would you turn on the porch light and turn off that hall light? Close the door and be sure that it's locked and I'll start the car. I understand. you. Come on in. Barnaby. What? We're going to a dance. Oh, yes. And we're going to be late if we don't hurry. Oh, yeah. Now, let's start all over again. You've got your key. Mm -hmm. Now, it's in that pocket. Well, that's right. I put it there on purpose. And you're going to turn the porch light on and the hall light off, and then you're going to lock the door. Right. Now, come along, darling. Are you thinking? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's pretty dark in here, isn't it? Oh, that's better. What are you thinking about? Oh, that's the test we made in the lab today. They proved that only 23% of the formula is being assimilated. Oh, the formula. Oh. Well, you know what that means. That, that, that means that 73% is absolute waste. 73? What happened uh, to the rest no, of no, it? No, no. No, not 73, 77. What did I say? 77. Oh. I guess that's why it's having so little effect on those chimpanzees we're experimenting with. We've been giving it to them for over two months now. It certainly hasn't done what it should have done. Well, I thought it was doing rather well. No, no. No, that's the trouble. It isn't doing well at all. Well, what about that one monkey you told me about? Oh, you mean Rudolph? Yeah, well, he's pretty old, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Well, Rudolph's about, uh, well, he's about the equivalent of 84 years old in a human. Well, didn't the formula cure his rheumatism? Mm -hmm. Didn't it make his coat much glossier? Mm -hmm. Didn't you say he felt a lot better? Oh, in a way. Well, then what do you expect? Well, it isn't what it should be, Edwina. Well, it must it be before you're satisfied with it. Well, Once theoretically, it should have a much greater effect. Now, I've just got to find a way to make it more easily assimilable. Huh? Assimilable? More easily assimilated. Oh, yeah. You know, I thought I had a good idea at the front door just now. Uh, I guess I just thought I had. Anyway, it's gone. Well, it'll come back to you. I doubt it. It'll come back to you. Oh, that's the trouble about being a chemist. You know, you can't actually think. Every now and then, you'll feel compelled to sit and stare at a sheet of white paper, hoping it'll speak to you, but it never does. Oh, is that a new dress? Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. That's it. <laughs> I like the way it sticks out. Mm -hmm. Or is that you? Well, you ought to know. It isn't you. <laughs> you ought to be going somewhere in a dress like that. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Holy smokes. We forgot all about the party. Why didn't you remind me? Well, we're not going. Well, why not? Well, we're not going for a number of reasons. Huh? One. When I dance with you, I want to dance with all of you. I don't want your brain to be somewhere else. Mm, I know. You're not very often the absent-minded professor, but, darling, when you are, you're a real zombie. Yeah, I admit it. And I don't want people to see you like that. Now, go on, sit down and relax and be brilliant. Hey. You know, you're all right. How do you like your eggs? How did eggs get into the conversation? You're hungry, aren't you? I'll fix you something to eat and call Hank and tell him we're not coming. Did you telephone Hank? Mm-hmm. He wasn't in. I left a message. Oh. 
Don't tell me you've solved the formula already. Mm -hmm. no. no, I've had my mind on another thing. Now, tell me, you've been looking forward to going to this party for a month, haven't you? Now, darling, we're not even going to discuss it. Oh, I know that. I'm just thinking. It's queer about people. What about people? Now, through no fault of their own, but they're older. Well, now, that's a profound no, remark. No, I do get older. Something happens to them. Are you referring to me, Barnaby? <laughs> No, I was thinking of the human race as a whole. Pretty sad group. Could you get me some soup plates, darling? Well, if you don't think the human race undergoes certain morbid changes as it matures, I ask you to recall the night of the Everett Winston party. Well, I don't recall any Everett Winston party. Do you remember our honeymoon? Of course I do, I darling. Put would. those over there. Oh. Well, a week after we got back from our honeymoon, the Everett Winstons invited us to a party. I'm sorry, darling, but I don't remember going. We didn't go. We didn't? Oh, yes. Now I remember. We stayed home. <laughs> Just like tonight. No, Edwina, that's what I'm talking about. We stayed home from that party for an altogether different reason. Tonight we're staying home for an intellectual reason. I remember reason. we didn't want to share Not each different. other with anyone. <laughs> you were so sweet. Remember how the telephone kept ringing for hours and hours and hours? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it. Uh, now, you see what I mean? Tonight we're answering calls. Hi, honey. Hi. Say, what's this message about not going out tonight? That's right. Why? Well, sometimes there are things more important than going to a dance. Oh, the genius at work again, huh? I'm glad I'm a lawyer and not a chemist. Where is he? He's in the kitchen. I'm fixing dinner. Well, I've got a few things to say to him. This has happened just once too often. Now, look here, Double Dome. What's the idea of doing something tonight you can do just as well tomorrow? I'll get you a drink. You'll feel better. Why can't you be a genius before sundown and a human being afterwards? Well, because I never know in advance when I'm going to be a genius. I... Here's a drink. You can't call off a date at the last minute when your wife's got a new dress and I've booked a table. It just doesn't make sense. No, I don't suppose it does. <clears throat> what are you doing? No, nothing, dear. I think you'd better sit down. Huh? No, no, no. Sit, do as I tell you and you'll see what I mean. <gasps> Cold? I see what you mean. Mm. Well, now, neither one of you are making sense. No. Uh. Well, I, I think that Mr. Entwistle is disturbed because he can't take you to the party tonight and dance all over your feet as he did the last time. Well, I certainly didn't reserve a table and order flowers and everything just to look at your face. Uh, uh, no, I don't suppose you did. Now, go on, sit down, have your soup while Hank drinks his drink. And be careful, it's very hot. Uh, Is it right now? Well, I can only tell you, Mrs. Fulton, if you'd have been smart enough to marry me instead of this, hmm. you wouldn't be in a kitchen cooking. No, where would you be cooking? Oh, Barnaby, did you burn yourself? I hope he did. Oh, darling, I told you it was hot. Don't worry, he has no feelings. Here, eat some bread, quickly. Well, oh, darling, say something. Heat. Oh, I know, blow on it. Heat. Just ordinary heat, I never thought of it. Heat could make the formula 100% effective. Darling, I think you solved the problem for me. Do you really think so? I'm almost sure. Hank, do you know what just happened? He burned his mouth. No, silly, he just solved our whole future. If your whole future depends on figuring out that a plate of soup is hot... Hey, now, wait a minute. Tell him, darling. I've been promised a pretty good job if I can make this formula work. Well, yeah, no more commercial assignments. No more working on non-skid girdles or noiseless popcorn bags. No fooling. Yes, a roving commission. Select my own field of research. Exchange ideas with other professors all over the world, including a percentage. Can hardly well, that's believe. fine. What seems to me a celebration is in order. No reason to stay home from the Yacht Club party now. No. Except we're going to stay home from the Everett Winston party. What are you talking about? Everett Winston left town three years ago. We're still staying home from his party. But you can't stay home from a party if you... Your phone's ringing. Yes, I know. Shall I answer it? No, just let it ring. That's important, isn't it? Oh, it's very important. Uh, you two are way beyond me. Well, please convey our regrets to the Everett Winston. And uh, say we're very sorry. The language is confusing, but the actions are unmistakable. Good night, you two. Just a moment, please. Good morning. Oh, Dr. Fulton, Mr. Oxley would like to see you in his office. 
Thank you. Good morning, Dr. Fulton. Good morning. Aren't you here early? Oh, yes. Mr. Oxley's been complaining about my punctuation, so I'm careful to get here before nine. Mr. Oxley's on the telephone. Won't you sit down? Uh, huh. I'm glad we have a moment. I have something I want to show you. For instance? Isn't it wonderful? I beg your pardon? The new non-replastic stockings you invented. Oh, the M41 acetate project. This is an experimental pair. The first pair out of the factory. Aren't you proud? Turned out rather well. I'll say. You can't tear them or snag them or anything. Oh, I'm familiar with the no project. No matter how hard you try. You'd be amazed, Doctor. Oh, no, I wouldn't be amazed. I've done a lot of experimenting with this kind of thing. Of course, I'm through with all of that now. Oh, uh, Mr. Oxley, Dr. Fulton's here. Good morning, sir. Good morning. You can come in now. Thank you. If you're not too busy. Well, Miss Laura was just showing me her acetates. Yes. Uh, no calls, please. Yes, sir. Barnaby, I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. You know, I'm very much interested in this new experiment of yours. As a matter of fact, I'm all steamed up about it. How's it coming? Well, our problem is to increase the efficiency of the formula. Could be quite a thing, you know. Yes, I stumbled onto something last night that may be of help. Well, that's good news. Uh, oh, I wanted you to see this advertising layout. I want your opinion. We jumped the gun on it a little, but I thought we'd better be ready. Well, well, why B4? B4, as in before and after, emphasizes the youth angle. Get it? <laughs> uh, what's the vulture doing? That's a phoenix, a mythical bird rising out of the ashes of age. Makes the youth point again. Dignified, yet forceful. And do you mind a comment, Mr. Oxley? Not at all. I'd welcome it. I think it's appalling. From what point of view? Well, it's lurid and inaccurate. It implies that we're going to offer the public some sort of fountain of youth drug. But wouldn't it make people young? Mr. Oxley. We're working with a large number of ingredients, each of which, as we know, accomplishes certain beneficial results. Well? Well, it depends upon which combination of those ingredients we use and the proportions in which we use them. Now, mathematically, we may never find the right combination or the exact proportions to produce the effect you're talking about. It will be a miracle. But you can do it, my boy. <laughs> I told you I didn't want any calls. Mr. Oxley, Dr. Linton's on the phone. I told him you were busy, but he says it's very important. Who is he? Well, he's Dr. He's my new assistant. Oh, yes. Well, just a moment, Miss Laurel. Find someone to type this. Oh, Mr. Oxley, can't I try again? No, it's very important. Better find someone to type it for you. Yes, sir. Anybody can type. Who'd you say was calling? Dr. Lenton. Oh, yes. Yes, Dr. Lentil? Yes. I know he's not there. Dr. Fulton is here with me. Yes. What? Really? What sort of reactions? Why, that's amazing. We'll be right there. Come along, Barnaby. You've done better work than you know. Come along, Miss Laurel. It's amazing. What's amazing? Dr. Watch McCauley says one of your monkeys broke loose. We've got to hurry. He's acting very strangely. Obviously, a reaction to your formula. I knew you could do it, Barnaby. I knew it. Be careful, Mr. Oxley. Don't behave yourself. Behave yourself. But what is she doing? What happened, Jerome? I haven't the slightest idea, Doctor. All I know is that he's opened the door of his cage and has been acting very strangely. Let go of him, gentlemen. Let's see him in action. No telling what he's liable to do, sir. Let go of him. Chip, Miss Laura, 84 years old, 14 years older than I am. And just look at him. I am looking, Mr. Oxley. This is incredible. <laughs> now, Rudolph, come down. Now, Rudolph, Rudolph, you come down. Now, come on, Rudolph. I don't understand. Have you been giving him stimulants? Only the formula. Only X57, Doctor. Good boy. 
Now, the test we made yesterday gave no indication that... Come on, Rudolph. Come on, act your age. What's the matter with you, Rudolph? Rudolph? Come down here. Don't act like yourself. This isn't like you. Come on. Now, come on. Come on. Now, come on, Rudolph. Behave yourself. Come down here. That's better. That's what you're doing there? That cage contains our new female monkey. By George, by George. Come here. Come here. Mr. Oxley, haven't you seen enough yet? Come here. Something's wrong. Let me see if there's something I can do with him, Mr. Oxley. I think you're welcome. Now, Rudolph, to him. now, Rudolph, you calm down. Now, come on, Rudolph. You behave yourself. That's better. Now, that's be a good boy. Do as I tell you. Now, come on down for that. Come on. That's good. Yes, come along. Come on. All right. Now, calm down and sit there. And let me look at you. Yes. Well, gentlemen, I think we've seen enough. I'd like to consult with Dr. Fulton alone. Barnaby, if your formula will have the same effect in humans, yes, it's the greatest thing in modern science. Sit down, Rudolph. We intend to discontinue every other product in the plant. We'll turn out before and nothing but before. I'd like to offer myself as the first human to try it. Mr. Oxley, that may be dangerous. I'm perfectly willing to take that chance. Oh, but this isn't Rudolph. What? what? No, no, no. This, this, this chimpanzee is only six months old. Now, Rudolph is a male. This is a female. Barnaby, are you sure? Well, reasonably. She's wearing Rudolph's jacket. But this is Esther. Here, hold on to Esther, will you please? Look, I'll prove it to you. Now, now there's Rudolph with Esther's number on. Well, I suppose the janitor gave them a bet and Swiss jackets by mistake. Yes, well, I, well, I suppose that's the way it happened, Mr. Oxley. I certainly feel that now. Well, personally, I, I'm really, I'm glad it happened. Well, you're expecting too much from that formula. Before, Mr. Oxley, perhaps it's the name that's confusing you. If you just let me work in the laboratory for a couple of hours, I'll be better able to prove what the formula will do. Well, let me know when you're ready. And let's have no more of these false alarms. They certainly take it out of a man. Come along, Miss Laurel. What a ridiculous way to start a day. Well, I hope it doesn't get any worse. Sodium escapade. Thousand milligrams. Okay. You keep quiet, Esther. Don't you like the way I'm doing this? <laughs> Molybdenum. Sodium molybdenum. Yeah. Let's see, four tenths each dose. So three doses will be 1,200 milligrams, everyone. Right? Check. Refrigerate these factors and heat these. These remain as is. We'll use Dr. Miller's cooler and incubator. Shall we label this X57 as usual? No, X58 and not B4. Oh, good morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Did the monkeys take a bath this morning? Why, is your one missing? No. <laughs> no, no, Gus. Yes. Did you bathe the monkeys this morning? Oh, yes, of course, sure. Well, then you mixed up their uniforms. Oh, I did? Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Doc. I'll fix them up right away. Oh, no, that's all right. You can do it when you feed them this afternoon. That'll be soon enough. But don't let it happen again. Oh, no, sir, I won't. <laughs> oh, quiet down. You've caused me enough trouble already. <laughs> Grown-up men playing with monkeys. My rabbit guinea pigs. Now monkey. <laughs>
appendicitis. Well, that's one of the things I hope the formula will alleviate. You intend to take it yourself? Certainly I do. Why not try it on Jerome? Oh, I wouldn't dare try it on Jerome. Do you remember what happened with the hair restorer? Yes, one of our more successful experiments. <laughs> well, we learned how to remove hair anyway. <laughs> Let's talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, how did you get out of there? Huh? Listen, Esther or Rudolph, whichever one you are. <laughs> Come on. Come on, you get right back in your cave. No, I'm not going to carry you. You all. Come on. What you do? Get out. Get back in. Oh, how'd you get out anyway? Gus, I thought you were going to attend to that later. Oh, I wasn't changing them, Doctor. Esther got out, not putting her back in the cage. Oh, well, I guess it was my fault. I forgot to close the lock. Kind of messed your stuff up there. I'll take care of it, Gus. Oh, all right. Oh, don't bother with anything now, Jerome. I'm anxious to try this. Seriously, Doctor, you think you should take it? Self-experimentation is against the rules of all good research. Jerome, the history of discovery is the history of people who didn't follow rules. Well, here it goes. To X58 and a better world. Whew. God, that's bitter. Get some water. Oh, that Gus. Oh, it even makes the water taste bitter. Away. Theoretically, Doctor, what might be the first reaction? Oh, I have the vaguest idea. What about the length of time? Well, it depends upon the period of absorption. It's quite possible that... Oh, touch of dizziness. Well, you have a slight flush. Oh, well, that's probably due to my natural excitement. Mm. Around 150. Well, that's odd. There's nothing in the mixture that could accelerate the heart. And you feel dizzy, you said? As a matter of fact, I believe it's increasing. Well, I'd better record my reactions. Pulse 150, is that right? 150. Mounting vertigo. No nausea. A sensation not unlike a series of small electric shocks. Jerome, Jerome, where are you? I'm here. What is it? I can't see. I'm blind. Please, go on with the notes. No, this is too serious. No, no, I'll get some help. Do as I tell you, there isn't time. I know what I took. If there's an antidote, we'll have to find it ourselves. Now, just take the notes. Well, it's like a cloud. A very peculiar feeling. A general milkiness, but no discomfort. In fact, uh, it's a sensation of extreme well-being. It's as if I... Doctor, what is it? Paralysis? Can you speak? Try typing one for yes, two for no. Can you hear me? Doctor, can you hear me? Perfectly. Hand me the telephone book, please. Whose number do you want? Let me have the book. Inglewood Drop Forge and Tool Company. 
1065 West Hauser Avenue, Inglewood West, 60945. It isn't possible. It is possible, Jerome. For the first time in 10 years, I am able to see without my glasses perfect vision. I can't believe it. There. Now I'm blind again. Fog, you see? Now I can see again. Doctor, X58 seems to be a success. Oh, indeed it does. I'll try my bursitis. <coughs> oh, Doctor. Oh, I think I'll pardon you. Not a twinge. This is amazing. Dr. Barnaby Fulton, let me shake hand with the next Nobel Prize winner. Delighted! Oh, pardon me, my phone's running over. Hello? Department of Water and Power, which one would you care to have cut off? Hello? Hello? Oh, Barnaby, you sound as if the formula was a success. Did it go well? Tell me, anybody giving a party we can stay home from again tonight? Barnaby, no one I know of. Oh, what a shame. Well, then pour yourself into that new dress and we'll go out and celebrate. All right, I'll be ready. Oh, but don't forget what you have to do. What I have to do? Well, first, get a haircut. Haircut, yeah. And get a new suit. A new suit, yeah. Oh, and darling... Uh, stop by the automobile agency. Mr. Peabody just called and says he has a very good buy. A good buy, eh? Well, goodbye to you. Oh, what a joke. A real <laughs> knee slapper. You do feel all right. Yeah, I'll get it. Oh. Hello, Griffith Park Zoo, Snake Department. Hello, hello, what is this? This is Mr. Oxley. I'll see if he's here. No, 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 I said this is Oxley. Who is? I am speaking. Oh, you're Mr. Speaking. This is Mr. Oxley speaking. Oxley speaking. Any relation to Oxley? Barnaby Fulton, is that you? Who's calling? I am, Barnaby. Oh, no, you're not Barnaby. I'm Barnaby. I ought to know who I am. This is Oxley speaking, Barnaby. Well, now, that's ridiculous. You can't be all three. Now, figure out which one you are and then call me back. And I'm coming right down there. Coming right down, all three of him. What will you do? What will you tell him? I won't be here. Where are you going? Well, I've got things to do. What? Well, I've got to get my hair cut and a new suit and a new car. But Mr. Rusty will be furious. What shall I tell him? Well, just tell him the truth. Tell him you don't know who he is. But Dr. Atkins say that. Eh? Well, I'll just keep your Bunsen burning. But Dr. Where's Dr. Fulton? Where's Dr. Fulton? I want to see him. Uh, he just left, Mr. But Rusty. I didn't pass him in the hall. He, he went through the window. Through the window? What's this all about? What's happened to the man? He took some of the formula and went out of here acting almost as though... No, exactly as though he were 20 years old. By George, by George. Do you know where he went? Yes, sir. Hello, get me Miss... Hello, get me Miss Laurel, quick. Where'd he go? Uh, to buy a new automobile, sir. What kind of car does he drive? A Ford. Hello, hello, Miss Laurel. Now, listen carefully. I want you to go to every Ford agency in town and find Dr. Fulton. But... Mr. Oxley, which shall I do first? He'll be at the agencies. To find him, you'll have to go there. Oh, I see, Mr. Oxley. And bring him back here. Yes, sir, right away. Well, Doctor, I cut it the way you wanted me to. I hope Mrs. Fulton likes it. She will. What do you think? You fetch rather well. But are you sure it's what you want, Dr. Fulton? Well, uh, tell me, do they ever wear trousers to match? Oh, very seldom. Uh, usually gray flannels. Oh, these socks ought to go well with it. To be honest with you, Dr. Fulton, I don't think either you or Mrs. Fulton are going to be happy with this type of car. It isn't exactly what you had in mind. Yeah. Well, you're perfectly right. Let's take off the fenders. No, I'm sorry. We can't do that, Doctor. It's against the state law. Ah, oh, it's too bad. Well, say, you don't happen to have a beaver tail anywhere around, do you? I... Hello, Miss Lowell. Oh, hello, Dr. Fulton. Hi. Hi. I found you. No, I found you. Pick a finger. Dr. Fulton. Oh, you know that one? Yes. Oh, what a pity. Mr. Oxley sent me. He wants to see you right away. Oh, well, hop in the bus. I'll get you there in a hurry. Is this your car? Sure. Gee, it's a honey. Well, it takes one to know one. <laughs> oh, Mr. Peabody, would you get that soup box out of my own car, please? Well, all set? Is your motor running? Is yours? Oh, thank you, Mr. Peabody. Just mail me the bill. Certainly. It takes a while to warm up. It does me, too. <laughs> well, watch your head. I'll watch everything else. Oh. 
see. Would, would you be good enough to park the car for me, please? Sure, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Mrs. Fulton. Good evening, Joe. Thanks for calling me. Is the doctor in his office? Yes, ma'am. But I went to tell him you were coming. He'd gone to sleep, so I didn't wake him up. Oh. Does uh, Mr. Oxen know if the doctor's come back? Yes, ma'am. He said he'd be down. Thank you, Joe.
Mm. Who is it? It's me, darling. Oh, hello, Edwina. I can't see you. Well, where are your glasses? Oh, let me think. Oh, I left them in the lab. Jerome probably put them someplace. Well, I'll find them for you. Yeah. Oh, here they are. Barnaby. Hmm? You sure you're all right here? Where? Here they are. Oh, yeah, I'm just a little fuzzy. What time is it? It's almost 8 o'clock. Oh, no. Is that late? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've done it again. We were going out for dinner. Well, I've already had my dinner, but I brought some for you. Mm. You know, Edwina, I'm terribly sorry. I wouldn't have... I know you wouldn't have, darling. Where'd you get the poodle? Poodle? Mm. Well, don't tell me I bought a poodle. The haircut. Oh, yeah, that, that. Oh, yeah. That's uh, quite a jacket you bought. Yeah, too. I know, I know. Well, wait till you see the car I got. No, what kind? Uh, you'll see it soon enough. Oh. oh, darling, you were a real idiot to try the formula on yourself. No. Something could have happened. Oh, it did. I mean, something serious here. Have some coffee. Yeah, thank you. Oh, oh, I strained every muscle in my body. Roller skating. Good heavens, don't tell me you went roller skating. I'm yeah, afraid I did. And your face is breaking out with red blotches. Oh, they're not blotches, dear. That's lipstick. Oh. Yeah, Edwina, what I have to tell you is unbelievable. Yes, it is unbelievable on roller skates. Hmm, what balance? Well, I, I wasn't on roller skates all afternoon. Obviously. No, you'd never believe what I did. I broke records. Huh? Oh, you'd have been amazed. I wish you could have been there. Well, I wish I had been, too. Well, I did things I never dreamed I'd do. You know, I tried a swan dive. I missed. Well, no wonder you're worn out. Barnaby, all of this is very confusing. What about the formula? That's what I was telling you about. Oh. Oh. I'll start at the beginning. At 11.52 this morning, I took a dose of the formula. And in a few minutes, I began to behave exactly like a college boy with 20-20 vision and no burst cycles. And plenty of lipstick. Well, well, the formula had nothing to do with that. I'll get to that later. Edwina, we've discovered something that the human race has been searching for since the beginning of time. Are you really serious, Barnaby? It works? Well, it did on me. Because I, I can't explain the reactions. It seems to work on the mind. Edwina, imagine people never aging. Oh, it sounds frightening. Mm. You mean it, it really does that? Well, because I don't know half of what it'll do. The dose I took is already worn off. Well, let me see, that was eight hours. Uh, well, probably the dose was wrong. Now we'll see. Hey, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to try the experiment again, but this time with a larger dose. Huh? Oh! Oh, switch on the light, will you please, dear? Barnaby. Hmm? Must you make another test? Oh, probably several. I'm glad you're here to see that nothing goes wrong this time. I want you to observe and make notes of everything I do. Hmm. Knowing me so well, you'll be able to interpret the exact meaning of my behavior pattern. Don't you think you ought to change that coat and wipe that stuff off your face before you try it again? Oh, yes, perhaps you're right. By the way, whose lipstick is it? Oh, uh, what's her name? You know, Ox's secretary. Oh, you mean that little pin-up girl? Very cute. Sort of, but half infant. Not the half that's visible. <laughs> well, she's not my type. Barnaby, how, how much of this stuff are you going to take? Oh, just what I poured out there. I've increased the dose. See, in that way, I'll be... Uh... Edwina, what are you doing? What did you do that for? <coughs> because this is the way it should be. After all, you're the scientist, and you should do the observing. But... Now, don't argue. Go on and get your notebook. I've done it. Oh, it tastes awful bitter. Get me some water. Oh, now, really, Edwina, for heaven's sake. Besides, according to your story, you weren't exactly 100% scientist after you took it. Other things became much more interesting. Perhaps you're right. Oh, even the water tastes bitter. It did to me, too. Oh. Barnaby, I'm a little bit frightened. I'm here, dear. It's kind of silly, isn't it? I'll take care of you. I don't feel anything. Is it supposed to work right away? Just a few moments. Would you clean off your face? Because if I get ten years younger and see that lipstick, I'm liable to knock somebody's block off. Oh, yes, dear. Barnaby, 
Is it true about B4? I've just heard the most fantastic things about you. Does it work? Uh, you'll have a chance to judge for yourself quite soon, Mr. Oxley. My wife just took 50 cc's of the formula. Really? By George, by George. Dr. Bruner and Miss Laurel are on their way. Leave word there to come in here immediately. Yes, Mr. Oxley. Well, Mrs. Fulton, it's very kind of you to lend yourself to this experiment. Thank you, Mr. Oxley. Well, we have to watch your reactions, darling. Yes, I suppose so. Now I know how a poor little guinea pig must feel. May I sit down? Yes, dear. But don't just stand there. Do something. Yes, dear. Mm. Pulse around 150. Just the same as mine was. It doesn't seem to be any fever. Outside of being somewhat embarrassed, I feel exceedingly well. What reaction do you expect, Barnaby? Well, I don't quite know. I suppose it depends upon the individual. With you, it took the form of thinking as though you were 20. Oh, that's true. Keep still, Edwina. Right that's a good guy. What was Mrs. Fulton like at that age? Huh? Well, Edwina was a very serious-minded student. She majored in economics and took several summer courses in ichthyology and cooking. Ichthyology? Mm, the study of fish. Jerome said your first symptoms was your eyes. Your vision became perfect. Oh, that's true, Miss Doctor, but you can't count upon that. You see, Edwina's vision is already perfect. It will probably take an entirely different form. My dear, do you feel anything strange? Not a thing. How about you, Mr. Oxley? Oh, but I haven't taken anything. Oh, yes, you have, Mr. Oxley. You hear that, Barnaby? A rather odd reaction. Undoubtedly, we can expect something soon. We certainly can. She's sitting very still. Is it possible there's not enough movement? Well, if there isn't, there soon will be. I can hardly wait for the results. This is quite a moment. That's it, Oxley. Watch him, Barnaby. Watch him. It's working. It's working. It's working. You hear what she said, Barnaby? It's taking effect. Something wrong, Barnaby. Well, what's the matter, sir? I don't know. Oh, well, perhaps the excitement's been too much for you. Perhaps you ought to sit down, Mr. Oxley. No, no, no. Calm yourself, Mr. Oxley. Now, take your time, Mr. Oxley. That's, that's better. Take your time and sit down. Oh, my. Oh, my. Give me a piece of pie. Eve, I give a piece of pie. Uh, I think we ought to go now. Give me a piece of pie. No, I think we ought to go, yes. Give me a piece of pie. Eve, I. Where are we going? Well, I'll be right back, Mr. Oxley. Eve, I. Give me a piece of pie. Hi, Dr. Fulton. Hi. What did you say to her? Mrs. Fulton, he said hi. I heard what he said, you peroxide kissing bug. Edwina, she hasn't done anything. I'll pull that blonde hair out by its black roots. Edwina, now come along. Miss Laura, you keep out of the way. Edwina, Edwina, now stop it. Mr. Oxley, I'll be right back. Pull him up. Pull him up. Wasn't that fun? Did you see him jump and put a fish in his trousers? Come on, let's go back to the No, I don't think you're better, Edwina. I don't. Why not? Where are we going? Well, anywhere. Let's go dancing. Well, Edwina. All right, let's go. All right, all right, go dancing. Anything you say. Oh, is this our new car? Yeah, I'm afraid it is. Hey, that's super duper. Oh, you like it? Oh, boy, yes. Yeah. Hey, why don't you let Wait. me drive? You go and get over there, huh? I know. We'll go dancing at the Pickwick Arms. Pickwick Arms? Yeah, that's in La Jolla, don't you remember? Well, of course I remember. Room 304, where we spent our honeymoon. All that way. Yeah, we'll stop by the house and get some things. What are we, fun? Just to go dancing. Edwina, I put the bags in the car, and we can keep your coat on the, on the... Barnaby, do you think this is too conservative? Well, What I... do you think? Well, well I... say something. Well, I'm I... glad you like it. I'm going to drive. You're too slow. Uh, How do you work this? Oh, yes, you know, like that. <laughs> Honeymoon with no hands, yeah, sure. Aren't you excited? Well, yes, of course, dear, but there's no hurry about it. Uh, wouldn't you like to slow down so that we can talk? Who wants to talk? Well, Edwina, I have to test your reactions. Oh, Barney. No, oh, it's wonderful to have the wind in your hair 
can watch the moon and the stars. And the road. Oh, the road. Oh, good evening. Would you like to register? Yes, please. <clears throat> Do you have a small suite overlooking the ocean, please? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Psst, psst. I beg your pardon? Psst. Oh. Is room 304 vacant? Yes. That's the bridal suite, you know. Yes, I know. Please leave word that we're not to be disturbed. Yes, sir. 304. Come along, dear. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. Edwina. Edwina, dear. Barney, listen to that. Let's not waste time. Let me take the bags on up to the room. Darling, it's 11 o'clock. I've had a very rough day. Oh, Barney, you promised. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Just, just put the keys in the room, bring me the bags, and I'll... Uh, oh, oh. you beginning to feel tired at all? Not a bit. Why, do you want to go someplace? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, no, I, I was thinking, you know, I, I should make a few tests. Check your blood pressure and heart. And... Oh, Barnaby. Not tonight. Uh, Edwina, in making such an experiment, it's always good to make as few... Barney. What? Are you sure you really love me? Well, of course I do, dear. Whatever made you ask such a question? just occurred to me. Now, does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. You know, I love you so much it makes me dizzy. 
Really? Mm. When did that start? First time I ever met you. No, no, I mean the dizziness. Oh, I don't know. This is our honeymoon night, and that's all oh. I care to think about. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Barney. Barney, what are you going to do? Well, I was just going to put on my pajamas. Well, uh, uh, don't you think you'd better change in there? What for? Well, uh, well that, that's all right. I'll, I'll take my things in the bathroom. Minutes. Became suddenly shy. I better put it down. Fifteen minutes to change. Complete reversal of usual behavior pattern. Oh. Edwina, Edwina, are you all right? I'm so happy. <laughs> well, what's the matter, darling? Why are you crying? I can't help it. Well, is it because of something I said or did? No. Well, what is it then? I was just thinking. What about? Now I understand. No, you don't. Well, what is it then? Oh, I can't help but thinking how she must be feeling tonight. She never liked you. Well, I must say she doesn't try very hard either. I do everything I can to please her. How can you be so insensitive? She had such wonderful dreams for me and my future. Well, she can still have them, can't she? No, she can't. She oh. can't. Edwina, we drove all the way down here to enjoy ourselves and to pursue an important scientific experiment at the same time. Now, let's not spoil it all by having a silly quarrel about nothing. Don't you call my mother nothing. I didn't call your mother nothing. <gasps> Don't you raise your voice to me. I'm not raising my voice. Hank Entwistle so wouldn't fly into a rage oh. just because a girl happened to mention her mother. Oh, for heaven's sake. What's Hank Entwistle got to do with anything? I only mention Hank Entwistle because my mother was always very fond of him. He knew how to please her. You know, there's something clinical about the way you bring up the name of Hank Entwistle every time you get annoyed with me. Do you regret not having married him? Look who's talking. Uh. What about Elvira Bliss? Oh, oh, for heaven's sake, Elvira Bliss, that was in grammar school. I know, she was the teacher. Yeah. And I suppose that Myra McKillop was in grammar school, too, and Miriam Ingalls, whom you tried to teach to play golf for three years. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. She's still got my putter. And you dare speak of Hank and Twistle, who only kissed me once. He kissed you? Well, that's something you never saw fit to tell me before. You kissed Hank and Twistle? I never said that. Oh, I said he kissed me. I never kissed him. You certainly did say exactly I that. said nothing. I said no, no. <laughs> My glasses. You struck me. You struck oh, no, me. You are a woman. You brute. You get out of my room. You get out of my room. You get out of my room. Oh, no, no, no. Edwina, now stop it. Now, really. Oh, Edwina, now this is ridiculous. You know I can't see. Edwina, please, let me in. Do you realize that I'm out here in the hall and I... Oh, no. Oh, no. Edwina, something's caught in the door. Please, let me in. Well, it's your own fault. Please, let me in. No. Uh, oh, well, if there's only some way I can make her understand. Oh, I know. Edwina, Edwina, dear, listen to me. We're poor little lambs who have lost our way. Ba, ba, ba. Edwina, you hear that? Edwina, Edwina, please. Operator! Now, Edwina, I can't stay out here any longer. Uh, oh, well. Oh. Oh, you 
unlock the door. Well, it's about time. Now, dear, if you just cooperate, we're going to... Oh, dear. I wish I knew where there was a telephone. Oh, perhaps there's one in here. You'd think there'd be a telephone somewhere. Edwina, let me in. The key's in the car, ma'am. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. How's that, mister, all right? Oh, yes, thank you. Now, if you just... Barnaby! Oh, my poor darling! Oh, Edwina, is that you? Darling, I've looked everywhere for you. What are you doing here? I'm getting out of the laundry. Oh, the laundry? Uh, these two ladies were kind enough to help me. Thank you both very much. I'll be all right now. Yes, thank well, we're you. glad to help. Any time at all, mister. Oh, I hope I don't do it again. Barnaby, do you want to go into the hotel and change? Oh, no, no, no. Please, just take me away from here. Take me home. Well, the car's right over here. Oh. How did you get in the laundry? Well, I don't know. I think I flew in. Got one step. Oh. But I didn't have my glasses. Uh... Yes, I know. I stepped on them. Here, you better put this on. What for? Because you might get cold. Oh. That's it. Here now, get in. Oh, that's... Oh. Are you all right? Yes, thank you, dear. Are you? Yes, the effects of the formula have worn off. Now, don't talk. Just relax and try to get some sleep on the way home, huh? Yes, dear. such a peculiar dream about Hank. Oh, was that true about you kissing him? Not that it matters, of course. Oh, darling, that's so silly. Oh, I just remembered. I did something terrible and I forgot to tell you. Hey, who's that? Hold it. You get it? No. Oh. Dr. Fulton? Yes. Sir. We're from the news, doctor. We'd like a statement. Well, what about? We had a call from your lawyer, Mr. Entwistle. Oh, my. I do wish Hank wouldn't give out statements to the press about my work. Well, give us the whole story, Doc. Uh, Bonnie, well, I think... Uh, well, darling, I, I can't be impolite to the gentleman. Well, I have nothing to say until I've finished all of my experiment. Is there another woman, Doc? Uh, oh, no, no, there's no other woman. My wife has been my only victim so far. Uh, I'll have a much better story for you when I've experimented with ten or twenty others. I'm not going to try it again with human beings for a while. I'll stick to chimpanzees. Oh, is that right? Oh, wait a yes, minute, Barney. You, you're talking about two different things. Well, what happened, Doc? Did your wife raise your love nest? Uh, don't answer that, Barney. You don't know don't what Don't try to protect him, Edwina. This is good for our side. What are you doing here, Hank? I'm here because I... Get I'm... inside, Now, look, don't do that, Mrs. Fulton. This is all the story I've got. Well, that's all the story you're going to get to. Bye. What is the idea of making statements to the press? Don't try to pretend you don't know the reason. Barnaby, well, I, I tried I, to I, tell you uh, out on the porch, but... You, you know the reason it. very well, and don't pretend that you don't. It all yes. happened at the hotel last uh, night. Yeah. Keep your distance, Fulton. After you left, If you lay a hand on her, you'll answer... Barnaby, please just... shut up and go home. Yeah. What? Barnaby, I've tried... Mother! Well... Oh, no. Edwina, Hank told me. I expected you'd be bruised and disfigured. But, Mother, you don't understand. Edwina, what is everyone talking about? You stay away from her, you wife Mother, beater. it isn't what you think. Now, it's all my fault. No, Edwina, I won't let you forgive him. Hank, will you just do it shut again? shut up. Edwina, Hank And you right. too, Mother. But as your lawyer and your friend, Hank, I must you advise are going. you... Uh, but you I, are just me. one too many. But you told me I that you know I did. Now, well, what is it you want I'll me to do if you don't want... Now, go on. Now, listen here, you two. No, you listen to me. I'm not going to let you throw away the rest of your life. Oh, Mother, Edwina, a... will you please tell me what's been going on? Barnaby, if you'll only oh, give me... Oh, I just knew something like this would happen. Edwina, Mother... will you please tell Quiet. me what's... Quiet! Mother, I've been playing guinea pig for Barnaby, trying a new formula. And under its influence, I caused all this mess. Oh, oh, you, you mean you telephoned Hank? Yes, darling. I, I did that last oh, night really, after yeah. you left. I'm terribly sorry, but I couldn't oh, help Oh, well, her. I don't suppose it was your fault, actually. Oh, don't let him dominate you again. Do something. Do anything, but oh, my, just... My, my, my dear mother-in-law. Yes? 
Now, I have not lost my temper with you for seven years. Do not trifle with your luck. Well, let's be civilized about this. Oh, that's better. Now, just mind your business and shut up. <laughs> now, would you drive me to the plant, please, Edwina? Right away? Yeah, yeah. As soon as I can put on some clothes, I'll try to salvage some of the wreckage I seem to have made of our lives. Well, I... Th Mother, I think you'd better be quiet. Hello, Jerome. Well, good morning, Mrs. Fulton. Doctor, I looked everywhere for you last night. Later, Miss please, Fulton. Jerome. Right now, I'd like to have the laboratory to myself for a while. Oh, yes. Very well, Doctor. Uh, oh, Edwina, my spare glasses are in the top drawer of the desk. Would you get them, please? Certainly, dear. Here? Oh, yes. Here they are. Doro, you're acting rather stern. Are you angry at me because of what I did last night? Edwina, I thought this over very carefully, and I've almost come to a conclusion. I was thinking of destroying the formula. Destroying it? Well, then you are angry. Oh, I've been in better moods. Do you think you'd feel any better if I fixed you some toast and coffee? You haven't had any breakfast yet, remember? Yeah, thank you. I'm starved. Now, the coffee and coffee pot are in there. You can use this plug as your own uses. All right. You know, I, I've decided that the formula is the most dubious discovery since itching powder, and just about as useful. Oh, I wouldn't say that. It cured your bursitis and improved your vision. I must say it made you feel young. Huh. I'm beginning to wonder if being young is all it's cracked up to be. We dream of youth. We remember it as a time of nightingales and valentines, and what are the facts? Maladjustment, near idiocy, and a series of low comedy disasters. That's what youth is. I don't see how anyone survives it. <laughs> now, Edwina, mm. tell me something, because it's been bothering me. Yes, dear. Why did you want a divorce? Oh, Barnaby, it wasn't me. It was the formula. You ought to understand that. Oh, I understand it was the formula that brought it out. Brought what out? Well, some subconscious aversion to me. Aversion to you? Well, I love you, you potato head. Oh, well, I know. There isn't some buried resentment that you don't consciously realize. Well, I certainly don't consciously realize it. And I think that's pretty rotten of you to say that. Wait a minute. What about the way you kept bringing up Hank Entwistle? Oh, that's more than... gosh. Do you love him? Now, that is ridiculous. I don't know. You kissed him, didn't you? You can't seem to get that out of your mind, can you? No, I can't. Well, all right. Are you in love with this, um, who's it? Of course not. Well, you went smooching with her on roller skates. And may I ask, what was your hidden aversion or subconscious discontent or whatever it is you want to call it that made you go playing patty cake with her all over town, doing a swan dive, acting like a... Well, go on. Oh, Barnaby, don't say anything, darling, and I won't either. We should be fighting. Having doubts about our marriage, that isn't right. Uh, that's just my point. That's why I'm going to destroy the formula. Oh, now, really, are you crying? Are you sure you want to throw away two years of hard work? Yes, I am. But it's still in my head, unfortunately. I'm going to forget it. It's too dangerous. It's utterly unpredictable. Oh, now, please, please, don't use this water. Can't you see the sign? Just use the bottled water out of the cooler. And make plenty of coffee. I need a lot this morning. That's that. Right. This is Mr. Oxley. Oh, Mr. Oxley, Dr. Fulton's here in the plant. He just came in with Mrs. Fulton. Are you sure? Oh, yes, sir. Well, how is Mrs. Fulton? Is she behaving normally? Well, she didn't try to hit me, but she wasn't very polite. Never mind. Now, listen carefully, Miss Laurel. I don't want them to leave. Have the guards hold them if they try to go, you understand? Yes, sir. And notify the entire board of directors that I want to see them in the conference room immediately. I'll be right down. Why, this is funny tasting coffee. It's bitter. Yeah, I know. I noticed it. It's not the coffee. It's the after effects of the formula. <laughs> formula. What a fool I was to let you take that stuff last night. Well, you couldn't help it. Mm. Hey, that's your third cup. I know. It's your second cup, isn't it? 
Yeah. Oh, good. Suppose you've taken an overdose. Perhaps I didn't. No, no, I mean a serious overdose. You know, it's perfectly logical to assume that you'd have behaved even younger. Remember Mr. Oxley jumping around? Yeah. My, I'm going to be embarrassed when I see him again. Mm. How young do you think it could really make you if you drank a whole glassful? Oh, I don't know. Twelve, ten, five. Might even turn you into an infant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining you not being able to talk or feed yourself or even. <laughs> it could be very embarrassing. Yeah, it could be. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, it's just about what could happen. Ah, but, uh, I get it. Oh, hi. Hey, did you ever find the fish? What'd you do with him? Huh. Yeah, I'm keen. Oh, you serious, man? It's all Oxley. What's on your mind? <clears throat> Barnaby, could you and your wife meet me right away? We're just here drinking coffee. I'll be in the conference room. We'll be right there. Put that back, please. Put that back, please. Any other orders, sir? Going up? Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning, morning sir. Dr. Fulton will be here shortly, so please be seated. We must act quickly. You all know why you're here, to negotiate with Dr. Fulton for his formula. As far as money goes, I say all out and hang the expense. Yes, but as chairman of your board of directors, I want to point out that Fulton made his discovery on our time. I've got bad news for you, G.J. We do not have the formula. What? Last night, Dr. Lentil... Dr. Lentil, sir. Dr. Lenton, Dr. Fulton's assistant, brought me a dose of the formula and I took it. I can't tell you with what eagerness I waited the results, but there were none. No reactions at all. The formula that Dr. Thingamabob brought me is incomplete. Now, there must be another ingredient that he knows nothing about. Dr. Fulton has made no record of it, and there's nothing in his notes to tell us what it is. And without that ingredient, we are helpless. Failure to keep complete records is against every rule of this organization. Fulton knows that. He's been an employee for over ten years. Failure may not have been intentional. Fulton was not himself yesterday morning. No, definitely not. Well, let's hope he's himself now. There's no doubt about it. We are now dealing with a sane and adult scientist, and I anticipate no difficulties. Well? All right, Oliver, go ahead if you want them. It's up to you. I wonder what's keeping them. Doctor, would you mind taking a look? Yes, sir. Mm. Oh, Barnaby, Mrs. Fulton, come on in. Uh, what's the matter? Now, come on in, uh, Mrs. Fulton. Forget all about last night. I assure you I have. Come in. Yes, yes. <laughs> you fellows are always experimenting, aren't you? I believe you know everybody here. Yes. Take a seat. Make yourself comfortable. Oh, Mrs. Fulton, won't you sit over here? Do I have to? No. I want to sit here. All right. Barnaby, I think I speak for everyone here when I say that I consider you one of the great men of modern science. Mm -hmm. Now, I asked you to come here today to discuss the sale of your formula. Our organization... Our organization is ready to offer you a block of stock, the income from which is sufficient to keep you and Mrs. Fulton... to keep you and Mrs. Fulton in comfort for the rest of your lives. Now, the question is, how much cash do you want? Mm. Barnaby. I said, how much cash do you want? How much? Oh. Name any amount. A zillion dollars. What? How much did he say? A zillion dollars. That's a million trillion. Why, George, he's taken it again. Obviously. Look here, Fulton. Your discovery was our property in the first place. Now, take it easy. We don't have to give you a cent. Oh, I wish I had a nickel. Fulton, I'll blackball you out of the chemical industry. Oh, Is you're talking to a child, G.J. Don't be ridiculous. He's no child. Oh, what you said. Put him up. Put him. Here, give me something. No, 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 no. Knock that off my shoulder. Go ahead. Just knock that When we get mad, we don't fight, do we? Yes, we do. Father didn't teach you that in school. Well, who cares? Hi. Hello, Dr. Fulton. Did you come to play with me? No. I came to tell Mr. Oxley that... Never mind, Miss Laurel. I think you'd better go. No, no, no. I wanted to stay and play with me. Well, if I let her stay, will you tell me the missing ingredient in your formula? Yes, yes. All right, go ahead. Well, well, 
All right, now, now say terrify. Terrify. Now say tissue. Tissue. Now say them both fast together. Terrify tissue. No! <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Oh, goody, goody. Why, Miss Laura. Really, Mr. Oxley. But I, don't I'm you gonna... do that. Oh! <laughs> say so, Oliver. Well, come on down here and help me. Don't just stand there. <laughs> Barnaby? <laughs> Barnaby, I want to talk to you. You want to tickle that stairs? No, 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 no. Oh. How would you like to have a nice gold watch and chain oh. on your own? Yeah, oh. Wouldn't you like that, Barnaby? I've got one. No, 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 but not like this one. No, no, I don't want it. Well, would you like a new bicycle or a pony? Yes, how would you like that? Oh, what do I have to do for it? Well, all you have to do is to tell us what was the ingredient that you put in the formula. Oh, oh, well, you promised me a zillion dollars. Well, and a nickel. We'll give you a zillion dollars. Yeah. And a nickel. And, and, a, and, a, and a motorboat and, and, and a new pony. Yes, how would you like that? When? Just as soon as you tell us what the ingredient was you added to the formula. Oh, well, that's simple. I just added... Oh! Now look! Barnaby! Barnaby! Aren't you going to tell us, Barnaby? What do you want to write that for? Because it's true, it's true. It isn't, it isn't. You're going to erase it. I won't, I won't. Barnaby. Yes, you Barnaby, will. you I'll promised to give me the ingredient. You can't make me. You can't make me. Barnaby. Get her off. Barnaby. Get her off. Get her off. You big bully. I'll tell my mother. Oh, oh stop her somewhere. Barnaby. Barnaby, you can't catch me. Well, why don't you help me catch her? If you help me catch her, will you tell us? Sure. Somebody stop her there. Catch her. So please. That's what I said. I'll show him. I'll show Hello, Hank. This is Edwina. 
Oh, hello, Edwina. Would you come over to my house right away? What's the matter? It's Barnaby. He threw a whole bucket of paint all over me. See? Well, I didn't do a thing. I don't ever want to see him again. Now, listen, Edwina. Are you going to go through with it this time and really leave him? Yes, I'm going to go away far, far away. I'm going to go away and... Oh, I don't know. I just suddenly <gasps> feel very sleepy. That shock, Edwina. I saw a lot of it in the army. Now just lie down and keep warm, and it'll go away in a few minutes, and I'll be right over. Goodbye. <laughs> See what I do to him. I'll scalp him. That's what I'm going to do. I'll scalp him. Oh. Oh. some people think of. Morning, Mrs. Brannigan. Morning. You're going to be here for a while. Yeah, I should be another hour or so. Would you mind watching Johnny for me? I have to go to market, and there's too much trouble to drag him along. Sure, I'll watch him for you. I won't be long. All right. <laughs> Come on, Johnny. Here we go. Here. Now, there's a nice big yard for you to play in. You all right? Okay. <laughs> what do you want us to do with a bad, bad Red Eagle? Yeah, Red Eagle, tell us. Well, first we stop his car and then capture him. Then what do we do with him? That's time to escape and then burn him. Yeah. Yeah, and burn him good. That won't work. Uh, who said that? I did. Oh, you? Huh. Why won't it work? Somebody will stop us the minute we light a fire. They always do. Yeah, that's right. What do you say, Red Eagle? Well, that's time to a stake and scalp him. That's it. You mean for real? Sure. Can't scallop anybody unless you do a war dance first. Oh, well, just a minute. I, I'll... Now, now, remember that. You two braves... Can't scallop anybody unless you do a war dance first. Uh, that, He's uh, right, Red Eagle. Well, we can scalp him, can't we? You have to do a war dance first. Do you know a war dance, Red Eagle? Uh... Oh, uh, sure. That? That's no good. You gotta sing when you do it. Oh, oh you gotta sing. Well, all right, we'll sing. Oh, you with the drum. Give me a beat. No, give me a beat. Like, uh, bum, 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 bum. You sing. Me want a warm pump. Me want a warm You sing, Joe. Me, you go. Me want a warm pump. Me want a warm pump.
Barnaby. Darling, speak to me. Say something. Oh, my darling. <sighs> Operator. Operator, get a taxi, will you? Uh, this is 1605 Gilcrest. Send a taxi right away. Emergency. Thank you. Darling. Oh, darling. Barnaby. Are you trying to say something? Well, speak to me. Barnaby, I'm your wife. Say something. Oh, my poor husband. What have you done to yourself? Driver, hurry. Please hurry. Yes, ma'am. Right this way, mister. Hello, kids. Hi. Hi. Well, why did Mrs. Fulton say to meet her here? He didn't say. Was Mr. Fulton there? I mean, at the house. He could have been. Oh, that's the reason. I see it now. Mister, will you play with us? We need a nice tall man to play Maypole. Well, I'm sorry, but I haven't time now. Don't you like children? Of course I like children. Why are you mean to them, then? I'm not mean to them. Don't you want to make us happy? Of course I do. Then play Maypole. All right, I'll play Maypole, will you? If you'll go tell Mrs. Fulton I'm here. Okay. You're very nice to play maypole with us. Now you step right back here against this tree and hold this up real high. All right. That's fine. Come on. I thought you were going to tell Mrs. Fulton. Can't I watch for a minute? No, you promised you'd do it if I'd play maypole. But what was it I promised to tell her? You tell her that I'm here. Now why don't you... Hey, wait a minute. You're getting this too tight. I can't move. You can come out now, Red Eagle. Get excited. Would you like some lemonade or a piece of candy? Oh, stop it, Mr. Oxley, stop it. The formula's worn off. I'm not a little girl any longer. It's Barnaby I'm talking about. Well, what is he up to now? Well, you've got to save him. You've got to bring him back. I'm trying to bring him back. I've got everyone, including half the police force, trying to find him. Do you know where he is? He's right here, right here in my arms. Now, now, Mrs. Fulton, don't cry. Remember, you are the wife of a great scientist. Oh, poor Barnaby. He was so brilliant. Now look at him. It's a pretty baby. Is it yours? Of course he is. I didn't know you had a child. Mr. Oxley, this is Barnaby. What? That's what I've been trying to tell you. This is my husband. You mean the formula's gone too far and this is the result? Yes. I can't believe it. Well, it's true and you've got to do something about it. By George, by George. Oxley speaking. Yes, Oliver? Prepare yourself for a shock, G.J. Dr. Fulton's formula has backfired and turned him into a baby. A complete idiot, huh? No, not an idiot, a baby. An infant, two feet tall. Don't talk rubbish, Oliver. I'm not talking rubbish. I can see, can't I? I wonder. Well, we've got to find an antidote, and we can't do that until we know what was in the formula. Well, just get the truth out of Fulton any way you can. Well, come on in here and help me. All right, now we've got to find us. Mr. Oxley, he's trying to say something. What are you trying to say, darling? Well, go ahead, tell me. Please try. Let me talk to him. Barnaby, I'm going to speak to you very slowly so as not to confuse you. But we're going to do everything we can to help you. But you've got to help, too. You understand? Barnaby, please listen. Now, Try wait. hard. This might help. Listen. He remembers. He wouldn't take it before. And now he will. Barnaby... We can't find the antidote until we know the real formula. Well, don't frighten him. I didn't say anything to frighten him. He's being evasive again. Barnaby, you lied to us about the missing ingredient. Now, what is it? What? Oh, Mr. Oxley, he can't talk. Well, what are we going to do? We can't wait until he grows up. I'll be dead. Yes, and when he's 20, think how old I'll be. Well, Oliver, is that the brat you were talking about? Yes, G.J., this is Dr. Fulton. Don't you call my husband names. 
Madam, what are you trying to put over on the Oxley Chemical Works? Stop talking like a fool. I came here for help, and you all are responsible. Jerome, you were my husband's colleague. Can't you find an antidote? I warned him. I warned this him. This proves there are no boundaries to science. You're all talking nonsense. That's no more Barnaby Fulton than I am. I ought to know my own husband. Yes? Oh, now look what you've done. You've made him cry. That's all right, darling. Don't cry. He's probably tired and sleepy. Yes. Sleepy? Well, that would be a sign that the formula's wearing off. That's the way it worked with me. You mean sleep might bring him back to normalcy? Well, it did before. Oh, bosh. Mrs. Fulton, where are you taking him? To his laboratory, so that he can take a nap on his couch where he'll feel at home. Oh! oh! Yes, thank you. Oh, isn't he cute? Miss Laurel, keep your hands off of him, please. I wasn't going well, He's to... defenseless. I can't have you touch him. He's got to get some sleep. Yes, ma'am. He doesn't seem sleepy now. Perhaps we should take a blood Shh. chemist. Please. Will you please be quiet and give him a chance? Yesterday, when he took the formula, he had to sleep before he became normal again. And he's got to sleep, Mr. Oxley. Sometimes I try counting sheep. Well, I hardly think he... Oh. I know what might do it. Now. Now, listen, Barnaby. We're poor little lambs who have lost our way. Ba, ba, ba. Silly song. We're little black sheep who have gone astray. Ba, ba, ba. George, this waiting certainly takes it out of a man. I need something. Haven't got a drink around you, have you, Doctor? But, Mr. Oxley, I don't drink. I didn't ask you that. I asked you if you had anything to drink around you. Well, for medicinal purposes... No excuses. Just get it. Good idea. All right. Get some water. Yes, I'd like a little water with mine. Will you have a drink, Mrs. Fulton? No, thank you. A drink comes in pretty handy sometimes. You bet. Water, Chi Please. Thanks. Well, here's how. Here we go. Bitter, doesn't it? Yeah, it's strange. Get rid of that before anyone else drinks it. Yes, sir. Give me a hand. There's no excuse for having water like that around here. Stop to see that that pool is cleaned out before it's used again. Yes, Mr. Oxley. No, no, please, no familiarity. Just, just go to sleep.
Barnaby, darling. Hmm? Oh, Edwina? I thought I'd lost you. And now there are two of you. Uh, what do you mean, there are two of me? I, I, I can't see my glasses, you know. Oh, your glasses. Well, wait a minute. Here they are, dear. Oh, oh, darling, are you all right? Yes, thank you. I'm all right. Here. Who is this? I don't know. I thought it was you. Oh, what do you mean you thought it was me? I don't understand. Well, don't you remember? I carried you in here when you were a baby. Oh, that's impossible. Well, don't you remember anything? Well, sure, the last thing I... <clears throat> I was scalping Hank Entwistle. Oh, get out of here. What's that? Get out of here. I don't know. Hey, you better take this. Yes. Yeah. Come on, sweetheart. You know, we ought to find out who that is. Yes, indeed, we must. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Fulton, I'm so glad. What's going on? They've taken it. It was in the water. What do you mean? The monkey mixed it. Oh, but he... <laughs> I'll get you! I'll drown you! Stay off me! I'm gonna make a monkey out of Rudolph! I'll get you! I'm gonna drown you, Doc! You have to give me your... No fair using hot water. Hey, you boy! Hello, Barnaby! Hi, old boy. I knew you'd pull out of it. Here's a contract for you. Signed, sealed, and delivered. You're a genius, old boy. Hey, we go. Hey, I'm going to get you. Oh, hey, you know. got a fire hole there. What's the idea? What's the idea? Now, put me a drop of me. Oh, Miss Burrow, come on in and join the party. Come on in. There he is. There's the man who did it to me. thinking. Uh -huh. I'm just beginning to. I was wondering if I had my choice of living these last three days over again, what I'd say. Well, let's hear it. That interests me. Well, we've got a new contract. We've had a lot of excitement. And we're going out in the town tonight, just the two of us. That's funny. I can't hear you. Oh, I didn't say anything anyway. I was just thinking. I was thinking about you. Care to elaborate on that? About your not being disappointed when you found out that it was Esther who'd invented the formula. Mm -hmm. Your suspenders would look better up. Imagine okay, the we're... secret of youth locked up in the head of a monkey. You think you'll ever find out how to make it? Oh, I don't know. They got Esther working awfully hard. Darling, why weren't you disappointed? Well, I've got a new formula. Now, Barnaby, if you start that all over again, say, help me out. Oh, I'd like that best, yes. Oh, you do? Huh? All right, what's the new formula? Well, it doesn't come in packages or bottles. You're old only when you forget you're young. Go on, say some more. Hmm? It's a word you keep in your heart. A light you have in your eyes. Someone you hold in your arms. My, I'm glad I'm going out with you tonight. Come here. Do you like my formula? Mm. Makes you think, doesn't it? I can use a lot of that. What time did you order the table? Hmm?